Thank you for joining us again on Diaspora Lounge. As you know, we've been talking about children and upbringing and how this affects who we become in the future as adults. This topic is really very strong and I would like us to pay attention to it because it is the reason for all the pain that we're going through, the things that we carry through from childhood, we get into adulthood, we're used to them and we continue to live our lives like that, not realizing that we can do different so that we can be happier people. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to just go, go into the studio now and bring the others in. If you're new here, thank you for, for being with us. And if you've always been watching our videos, thank you for staying with us. All right, I'm just going to play the intro. First thing you want to do is to regain your power. And it takes two to handle. Oh my God, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck. Right, so because I don't want us to miss anything, I'm going to be very, I want us to be very structured. I'm going to read what I have here so that we don't miss any of the things that I already have in mind. And I'm sure that you also have stuff in mind. Um, let's go. So I want to make a quick disclaimer here. I want to say that not all parents are qualified to be parents. And I can tell you this, this is real because even last night I spent like, I was just saying to you that my heart is, is breaking because of what I'm seeing young people going through at the hands of their parents, people who are actually supposed to care for them and help them to, to, to be normal human beings going into the world. And then you have these people being the ones who are destroying these, these children, these young people, and then no wonder you have what you have as adults today, right? So um, there are those that have open wounds that have never healed. This is the second category of people. It's different from people who are careless, who just don't think right. And then there are those parents who have wounds that they've never healed from, trauma that they've been through in life, and they are now bringing it into the lives of their children. Some of these people don't even know what they're doing. So that they are not people that you can talk to and tell this, this, that, that, that. They can't even take care of themselves to start with, not to talk of taking care of someone else. So for them, it's a completely different story. And we have to understand, and anybody who has gone through this with their parents or who is going through this, you have to actually begin to understand that you can expect better from them. Don't hold out on it. Don't hope that you're going to get it because they don't even know what they're doing, right? So now for this topic of upbringing, I would like us to divide this into three portions. First of all is the characteristics of the children that we want them to have before they get out there into the world. And then we're going to talk about sibling relationships within the home, how the things that we should be mindful of that affect the siblings, because you know that today you probably also have friends and relatives who are not speaking on speaking terms with their siblings. I'm sure that we can do better by paying attention to these things to prevent those things. I do know that sometimes you just have to cut someone off because if you don't, you you you're going to also get into that basket of madness with them. But before we get there, what is it that causes these things? If we talk about them, then we can do better. And then finally, I would like us to talk about raising the different genders, because you know that raising boys and raising girls, we're doing it very differently, and we're not doing the men a favor. At, and when we don't raise the boys with things that they ought to know, they're not equipped. Even if you raise the girls with those ideas, who are they going to pair up with in the future? They're going to pair up with someone who doesn't know how to do those things, except for those men who naturally, intuitively know what to do. We don't raise the boys with the awareness that they ought to have in having relationships. And these are the things that cause our problems. Now, please, let's go. Um, just as a reminder, we talked about the very first characteristic. Now, let's just start with characteristics of children that they should have. We talked about the very first thing that is the foundation in our last episode, and that is respect for oneself and respect for other people. And if you don't have that, if you don't have and for those who are Christians, you realize that the first commandment is to love God, love the Lord your God. And the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't have it, even if you're not a Christian, if you don't have that, even yourself, you are setting yourself up for failure. So please, let's go. Let's talk about characteristics. What else would you say? Can I? Oh, you are muted. Yes, okay. please go. Please go, Ajiri. Ajiri Am I muted? On. Okay. No, you I are good. You are good. Ajiri, you are good. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
as usual, I like to take it from the beginning, from the foundation. Now, what is the basic foundation of a child, be it a girl child or a boy child? A child ought to be born. That was the plan originally in the heart of God to be born into a loving relationship between man and woman, between husband and wife. Now, there's a scripture in Psalm 139, which says that even before the child was formed, even before the parents met each other, God knew that child and ordained the path the child was meant to take. I keep saying it, when you give birth to a child, that child is just an open slate. There is no template. There is nothing in that child is blank. What yeah. that child becomes is as a result of what you, the mother, and you, the father, impute into that child. That child has no, all that, you know, no, 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 no child. I believe in nurture, nurture versus nature. It is how you bring up that child that will make that child what he or she will become in society tomorrow. So what are you, the mother, pouring into your son, pouring into your daughter? What are you, the father, pouring into your son, pouring into your daughter? If you miss the first three to four years in your child's development, there is something about a child's brain. The thing is registered by the time they are three. If they're going to be love beings or if they're going to be evil geniuses in society, it is as early as that. It is very, very vital, very, very vital that you put in the, you know what they call data? You put in the right data. His opinion of life, his opinion of, of, of society is being formed. Look, when your child comes to you, and wants to hug you as a baby. Do not say, eh, I don't like being touched. No, no, no. You must respond to that child's love. Respond. Love is reciprocal. You as a father, you as a mother, be a cuddly one. Be a loving person. That does not mean you should not discipline. The Bible says spare the rod and spoil the child. There is a place for discipline. There is a place for cautioning the child. But if you pour so much love into that child, if you pour so much sense of who the person is, of who the child is, if you affirm that child, irrespective of the child's physical futures, irrespective of the child's innuendos, if you affirm your child in the first four to five years, you have set that child up for life. Hey, what you want to say, would you respond to what Ajiri said about setting them up and then, and then being good and kind? Because that brought something to my mind. I, I don't know if that really said it. Yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 I really said it a lot of uh, salient points concerning the upbringing of a child. And that's the reason why I say to people, and, and I think myself and Coco also reaffirmed that last week, that the early days of a child is where the work is. Yes, there's still work, even till they leave your house. But the what will make your further work easier maybe in later years is the template that you said from the beginning a child let me give you a child let me a very good example you can do a small test for some two to three year olds simple things like they give the child something like maybe biscuit or bread or whatever or cake and then an adult will come and say oh can I have some of that cake? Do you understand? Can I have some of that cake? If you have brought the child up in that aspect of giving, of being kind, is one of the is one of the simple signs of being kind. If that child, if you have brought up that child, that child will cut a bit and give it to the adult. It's a, as simple as it is, but hey. it's an example of setting them up early can we can we address that can we address that kindness and niceness because here's another thing that i find kindness and niceness some of us misunderstand it and when somebody is always concerned with being kind and nice 
concerned, not my word, not my, my way I'm phrasing it, concerned with being kind and nice. That yeah. can also be bad. So can we address that? Uh, let, let, me ex let me explain something to you. Eh? You see, there's, some, there's, there's a time for everything. There will be a time in the child's life that you will, you will put the clauses there. You understand me, boy? First and foremost, you got to, because the heart of a child is so open. They fight now. If two children are quarreling now, in five minutes they are playing a game. That shows you the heart of a child. So it is that time that you need to put. It is possible that as they grow older, they will overdo that kindness. But there's a stage where you put all the clauses for them and say, no. Yes, it is good to be kind and nice, but not when this, this, this. As and they grow older, you know, begin to now. Wisdom. You don't do that when they are small because you will confuse them. You know, but you need to initially sow the good seeds. Sow the good seeds in them. Let it right. blossom a little. Then you, you prune the edges. You prune the right. edges okay, so that they are great. well shaped. Yeah, that's all. Yes, that's great. And I think I, you've, put it, you've put it perfectly. And if, I, I think. and if I may add to that, we're not training up children that are pushovers. You must train your child to be nice but assertive. Mark my words. Nice but assertive. Your work is done at the age of six. Quote me. Your work is done at the age of six. Thereafter, the Bible says train up a child the way he go, and in the end, he will not depart from it. The Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. The Bible has so many things about children and upbringing. What you put in is what you get out. What you put in is what you get out. Now, in as much as the child has learned to love herself, even as she loves the neighbor, if your child does not have self-love for herself or himself, if he or she is not full of who they are, and their personality and what they are irrespective of who they are and always remember each of your children is individual and different and that comes to the sibling rivalry thing if i may get if i may get there quickly because of time treat each individual child on that individual child's basis no we'll get there we'll get there separately okay at the cost of time okay all right okay now another characteristic apart from kindness and respectfulness Sorry your to interrupt. Child. While sorry to interrupt, as you, as you're watching, as you're listening to this, if you haven't watched that one, it's titled "Would Your Child Would You Like Your Child as a Partner?" Something like that. Or do you, yeah. So please make sure you watch that. I'm going to also put in the description link here because that's very essential for your child okay. and, and even for yourself, so that you can understand yourself better. And then, if I may, and this lies a lot with the mothers, please. Don't lay so much emphasis on bringing up your girl child to be the perfect wife material, to be so domesticated, to be so everything, and you neglect your boy child. You don't want to bring up a boy who your daughter-in-law in future will spend all her years of being married to your son, cursing you and cursing the day you were born because you brought up a boy who, has, who is a fawn in her flesh. Let us learn to teach our boys. Can I, can I even say something? Our can I even say something? Huh? Can I say something? Put it this way. Let me just add something to that. You don't want to bring up a boy who will not be happy in his own relationship because when he's not doing being the man that he's supposed to be, the woman that he's with cannot give him the best of herself. And so their relationship is already not going to be good and balanced so even if it's for your own child's sake not for your sake not about cursing you it's about your own child because okay. don't think that he's going to lord it over her and be okay he still won't be happy the, not in the cursing you or being angry with you all i'm trying to say is that over the years the boy child has been neglected the upbringing of the boy child has been neglected so now yesterday I dissected with somebody a family where several of the adults' children have issues, several of them. And in the beginning, it wasn't quite clear why. But as we went. Each other. What, what do you 
several of them have this this person has issues the second one has issues this one has issues right these people are not living the, the way that they should be living as adults they have different different problems and these are people that in the beginning it wasn't clear by the time we we were we were going through the history of the family it started to become clear why because here is the thing some children live and this goes to the people who feel that um, parents must stay together no matter what some children live in situations where they're observing things they're seeing things that they know are wrong these are bad things for them to see and these things are not discussed they don't discuss it with anybody no parent comes and discusses it with them they know that somebody is having extramarital relationships they are aware of it they've seen things or they've seen pornography and, and they know the person who is hiding it or they've heard them quarreling and fighting crying silently the parents in the bedroom and then they come out and they act like everything is okay in fact this is one of the things that i saw that a child shared like a young person shared last night so then they hold all these things in and they're all pretending what it means is that you're sweeping things under the rug what it does to the people and this is what happened to these people who, who found out about themselves what it does to people is that because they're not expressing the truth of life as they're seeing it they're hiding reality putting it it's somewhere in their, in their subconscious you can't escape it so when you know that what you're seeing and sensing with your senses is different from the reality that you are portraying you're just living a pretentious life it comes back to haunt people that's why some people come out that thing is going to seep out some way one way or the other and some people end up having a mental breakdown some people end up resorting to addiction coping mechanisms some people end up becoming promiscuous or people pleasing or thieves something to express or some people that oh there's a rage there's an anger it's because something has been suppressed so we cannot be suppressing things living a pretentious life not discussing things with our children and expecting that they're going to just be normal some people cannot get on even with work career or school or anything because they have that burden to deal with and it's always there they are not normal they're not free in their minds you see these sweeping things under the carpet this it didn't really happen or we are there we're not there or lying to them this living in denial it is the bane of society it is the bane of families let me tell you they see it all they see your eyes as and they mother. begin to become distrustful they see they see you as a mother become a shadow of yourself they see the changes they see when your personality changes they see when you're no longer as available to them emotionally as you used to be in the early years or when they were much younger now if you don't address the issue if you push it under the carpet or you live in denial and you think they are also going to live in denial one day either one child will implode or one child will go extreme or one child will go into depression depending on the personalities of each individual child the reactions and the outcomes and the consequences vary so there's either it becomes a traumatized child trauma trauma plays on in future so that person has a, a trust issue especially with the lady she has a trust issue and she goes in and out and in and out of different relationships and it's always serving breakfast as they call it in nigeria breakfast 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 before you know it 35 hits before you know it 40 hits and then what are we saying oh oh she doesn't want to marry anybody oh but you created to, that you oh, put that in the oh, child's oh, life but you the parent created that situation you the parent created that created that monster or peradventure a guy sees his father playing the field and getting away with it mommy takes it anyway mommy keeps taking it anyway mommy doesn't stand up for herself mommy doesn't you know i mean mommy just takes it so i mean in his mind i mean in a bravagada way you know i mean typical okay. niger boy i can do can it I, and get can away. I, you have yeah, a can boy I reach? going around and playing the field doing i think we got that point i think we got that point yeah can I read um, from three young people? Let me just read what what they have sent here. I wanted to say something before you before you okay. read. Um, I want to tell people 
for those who are married, it's not too late. Whether you've, had, you've already had the children, if they are young, uh, you are, you are, it's good. If they are not, if you don't have children, it's good. If you are married, or if you are just newly married, uh, people sh should have perspective on their role as parents. Perspective is very, very important. Who am I to these children? Simple. As a parent, you are a role model. And if you one of his not one of his signs of showing that you love your children is that whatever you were doing when you were single, whatever you were doing when you were married, that you even you you are not proud of. When you become a parent, every effort must be made to drop those things. Because the moment you have children, you become a mirror. You are, people you are know the that the children that, don't even notice. Yeah, you are, the one, notice. yeah you are the one that they, they look up to. Everything. So, so you are the one they look up to. And there's nothing, there's nothing to say that Okay, even in the course of raising them, and then you 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 maybe you misbehave. Do you understand me? And that's what a lot of parents fail to do. Maybe you misbehave, you said something out of order, you said something that you would normally tell them not to say. There's nothing wrong in calling your children and you say, Okay, that thing that happened, that thing that I said, that is not the way to behave. I made a mistake. I did something wrong. It does not mean you should do it because it is wrong. Do you understand me? But a lot of people will just, oh, I'm father and mother. And then they will just let it slide. They will sweep it under the carpet. And it has made a concrete conscious imprint on the child. For years, the child remembers that situation. And if that kind of situation replicates in the child's life, they would take it like it's nothing because nobody told them that look that is not the way okay, okay let me give you let me give you a good example a man slaps his wife and the five or six or seven or eight or nine ten year old boy that he has saw it let me even say the woman was a very abusive and whatever the, the worst need. woman is called no matter what what you did is wrong as a man to lay your hand on a woman. So you, you might have made that mistake. You might never make that mistake again. But you, on that day, on at that time you made it, you have got to call that boy and tell the boy that that is not, that you made a mistake, that you do not lay your hands on a woman. If you do that, you have, at least to a very large extent, negated whatever effect it will have on that child. But if you say no word, communication is the key. You must come. I keep saying something, you must communicate with your children. Whether you like it or you don't. You don't communicate, you leave a gap, something else will fill it. And it's always negative most times. And if I may add to that, always learn to say I was wrong. If you were wrong, you are not. Okay, an we emperor. did that. We did that last that episode. You emperor, were right You are not an emperor. You are not a dictator. If you did, we already dealt wrong, with that. We're not going to allow you to take time doing that. We already dealt with that last episode. <laughs> Sorry. Now I just want to read. I want to read from. I want to read from these these um children. Okay, so they do everything because all they care about is what other people say and think of them and that is what shapes their whole lives this is what young people are saying about parents about us parents i truly wish that they could be real and also towards us the children of african parents that's what this, this person said stop all the toxicity just to appease other people and be real because we can see what is happening. We are human beings. And this one says, it's about status. 
they pretend that they are respectable people while being the biggest frauds, both mm. the men and the women. This, these, are, these things are real. I'm not making, I didn't mm. make them up, right? Those are huge this statements. Is, yes, this is literally my mom. She says, I, I am only interested in you and your sister. Pretend that she doesn't know what my dad is doing out there. This is what they are saying. So if they are saying this, do you, you, you need to know that they know. And what it means is that you are, in, you are planting it on them that they can go out and not be real to anybody who is living a life where they're not authentic. You just cannot be happy. Yeah. You can't be happy. And we have a society inside, where we are not yeah, authentic. You can't be happy. And here's the thing. We, for all our noise about Christianity, we are actually directing our energy in the wrong way because you are saving everything for the people who don't hold the gates to heaven. But the person who holds the gates to heaven is God. And whatever you are doing, he already knows it and sees it. Then you might as well not even be, be talking about Christianity. Because if all that matters to you is pleasing, making everything look as if it's okay, for the person who doesn't have any power over you, what is the point? Because the person who actually has power over your spirit, soul, and everything already knows everything you're doing. Now, I'm not saying that you should call your children and tell them, yes, I did this, I did that. It, 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 do it in love for the sake of the children and their psyche. Say, Allah, accept and admit that you are not perfect. <laughs> your children will forgive you and actually appreciate it. I am not perfect. I have made mistakes. I did this because I didn't know better. I was this way. I was brought up this way. I went through these experiences. Relieve yourself of, of the burden of your pretentious life. It will go a, a long way to help yourself and your family and your children and generations to come. I'm not saying you should go and open your mouth and tell them everything. But the moment they start to see you as somebody who is real and who cares, then they can trust you more and they can trust themselves more and they can go out there and be better adults because you are laying burdens on their men on their psyche that's what we're doing when we do all these things if i may there's a song um i i used to listen to some 30 32 33 years ago it says unattainable unreal i think the song was like you are unattainable and you're unreal it says a lot about this so-called even that bible that you everybody carries the truth shall set you free what does it say the truth shall set you free Could yourself be true for me so uh, i'm going to say uh, for, and you know all me, this yeah. all this for pushing me, things I'll under the that. carpet pushing things under the carpet by mothers especially by mothers suffering and smiling you think you are setting a very good example for your daughter but your daughter is looking at you and she's pissed off because as far as she's concerned, she can't even trust you. She can't trust, so she can't take advice fact, from you. In fact, she does not want to be like you. You are not worthy of emulation. You are not a role model. Because the person who is listening to me needs to understand that it's not in judgment. It's in, come, see what I've discovered. Let us do things this way, because this is the result that we're going to get. Not because I am a saint, and now I want to just tell you this is what you ought to do so you can be a saint like me. I, I want to say quickly say something regarding uh, uh, how this dovetails into the uh, uh, sibling's relationship within the home. I know we touched a little on it, but because it dovetails, I, I was just looking at maybe we should dovetail into because a lot of it, a lot of the things that we're talking about actually affects the sibling's relationship. So, you know, so the issue basically is that when parents are behaving badly in the home the mother does something wrong the father does something wrong they don't get to talk about it they don't get to apologize they don't get to do anything about it what you find is that because the perspectives are not aligned the different children if they have more, more than one child the different children see the issue from different points of view and that in itself creates the conflict 
or starts off the conflict because a lot of them are seeing the issue from a point of okay let me give you an example if some if one of the one of the child uh, or one of the children uh maybe is closer to the father so to say whether being a girl or being a boy whichever one or one of the children is close to the mother seems to be that's why I say to people, don't have a favorite among your children. It is the wrongest thing anyone can ever do. What you have is that when the mother does something that is wrong, one child has a different perspective from the other. So you are already create. If you don't call them together to straighten it and say, no, this, this thing I did is wrong. Do not do it. Each one of them will take different perspective from it and react accordingly. And that creates inherent conflict within that family, within their relationship. And yeah, that's, can yeah. grow from there. You know, that's why we, we emphasize the need for communication. If you, anytime anything happens between you and your spouse, or it might not even be between you and your spouse, between you and someone else outside, do you understand me? And you know that this thing is not is not the way any any human being should behave you must you must call as many times as you can and in correcting the truth about it in correcting or in saying in talking about it you're actually self-correcting you help yourself as well because you you yeah you will do everything not to make sure that that situation does not repeat itself when he wants to you will recall yourself because you remember that you're an example that is being watched that is okay. Being up to. Um, okay, can you respond to this? One of the things that makes this, these conversations um, essential, important, is it's for us to understand, to begin to understand why the person is the way he is or why I am the way I am. And this is us getting into the foundations in our, to our roots of how we became who we are. So now, when, I when in a relationship... Are you talking of parents now or the children, how we became who we are? The children, how they became adults. These are these adults are our partners and ourselves. These people are that is us. So how we became and how our partners became. Now, the essence of this is what, what I am thinking about, what is in, on my mind is when you understand this, then you will understand we're not the, the essence is not that we want to say that we can create or have a perfect person, a, a, a perfect person who has a faultless person. Is that when you now understand, okay, I want us to always go back to the roots and foundations of how we and our partners were brought up. When you now understand it, then both of you can now understand why this person behaves in this way. Because if you understand why the person behaves in that way, then you can begin to understand, okay, this is what caused this and I shouldn't be this way. Because otherwise we will be fighting. Like if I have a partner who does certain things, Fighting is not supposed to make us break up. What it's supposed to do is supposed to help us to understand ourselves better. So that this way now, instead of me to look at you and feel that you are, you are a horrible person, I'll look at you and realize that you are somebody who went through certain things and that's how you ended up this way. And that way, when I'm empathizing with what you went through and even you realize, and also whatever it is that you don't like about me, you will understand how I got there. And then we can now say to ourselves, let us heal ourselves of this thing. Let's dismantle this thing. So that instead of our, our, our misunderstandings and fights to cause us to separate, they will cause us to mold better, to be more empathetic towards be the next person. Examples. Huh? And, be, and be better examples to the children. Yes. And then we realize that, okay, even that particular thing, we don't let it happen to our children. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, but if it is something where somebody is so abusive, it's not that you're supposed to be able to solve everything. At least you can be helping them from a distance. You don't have to be the victim of their abuse. But now you understand where it's coming from. And then you can let them know, this is what I see, right? And then we need to work on this or you need to work on it. Not that you have to, I don't have to subject myself to your poison, even if I want to help you. So in as much as you're not subjecting yourself to the person's poison, everybody, this is where courtship comes in. And this is where talking, communication comes in. What are you talking about? Because whoever you marry, 
is a conglomerate. It's a kaleidoscope of all the schools he or she went to, of all the family members he or she related with as they grew up, of all the places they lived in when they were growing up, of all everything that their entirety that way that they made them, that made them their construct before they met you. Same thing for you. You are an entirety of all your experiences, all the schools you went to, all the people you mixed up with, all your relatives you mixed up with. So Stop this is where we, we should give room and we should give room for each other in love. And we should be patient with each other, knowing where the person is coming from and where and the person knowing where you are coming from. And how will you know if you don't talk? What are you doing during courtship? So we're talking about characteristics that children should have before they leave home. So I'll just throw one in and then you can take it from there. So say we must allow children to develop independence, to be able to do things for themselves, because this helps to build confidence. It helps for them to be able to now take decisions when they go out there. It helps them to feel like I'm capable. And not only does it help to develop confidence, actually doing everything for the child makes them become so reliant on us that they don't they, they even start to have low self-esteem so one of the things because when you say allow children to do things for themselves um otherwise they're going to develop low self-esteem it can some people can can find it confusing but i think it makes sense i, I don't think I, I i get the point of allowing children to do things themselves now it helps to the extent where it makes them not reliant on people if that makes sense but it has nothing to do with their confidence if it does probably just one percent out of a hundred yes because your confidence as a child growing up to be a, a, an adult is based on what is fed you the way your parents spoke to you it's got nothing to do with allowing children to do things on their own i.e taking the bus to school rather than dropping them or cooking rather than cook for them or clean their room rather than them cleaning it themselves you see they have these experiences what it does to them positively is different it's got nothing to do with esteem so i think we're even pairing the two very wrongly i.e my children you know in nigeria and um, with house helps and stuff anytime it, 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 when they were quite young um probably about phew how old was the first one when we went um maybe she was about 11 not for the first time but that was the sort of age where in my opinion they should be tidying their rooms because in the uk here they tied the one thing that you have to do of okay you must tidy your room right so they've picked up those skills of i need to tidy i have my chores i have my this but point i'm making is that has no bearing on confidence. It's only so that when they go out, like the first one is in uni, she cooks, she cleans, she does all that. Go to her room and she's saying, oh, do you want to eat my jollof rice? Which, by the way, is always really nice. But okay. so what I'm saying is it gives them the life skills, yes, as in to cook, to, you know, you know what I mean, as in to cook. They don't have to mutually exclusive. It's I'm not wanting to tell you. I'm talking yeah, about things does, like... It's not no, just but, all the things. For instance, filling applications, going to find out about something. You're trying to do something, going to find out about something. Some yeah, of the things also, still, okay. still, even in filling applications, that is not where the self-confidence, the, the low self-esteem comes from. Low self-esteem comes from so the many, words. There are so many places. There are different things. Okay, okay. If, if, if you could if you could clarify then probably i could have because you've you've just put it in one box so i'm just trying to separate okay. it to say no also i disagree doing feeling forms doesn't give you the confidence it's, it's the words that you tell the children uh, the things like Aki was talking about it's the things you do in front of them for example my kids they know me you know um I can't give an example because of time Aki has to go, but I've seen me several times in action outside the house, the way I do with things, right? Even though I'm a lawyer, it's been donkey years I practice last, you know, uh, so it's, it's not like I was even practicing by the time I had them. But I see the way I deal with issues, i.e. issues of racism outside, how I stand up for my rights, 
supermarket detail, you know, someone being absolutely silly. And they see the way I deal with these things. Now, these are the things that gives them the confidence to see, hmm, I'm learning from mom. This is the way mommy dealt with so, so some person outside that tried to be insulting, tried to be racist. Mm -hmm. That's what gives them the confidence that on their mm -hmm. own, in future, if they encounter such, I'm just using racism because of time, I can't think of any other, they would know how to deal with it. So they learn from us. That's the confidence in my, my opinion. So yeah, that's, that's, that's very good them. too, of course. That's very good too. So Ujama, I can do, yeah. Ujama, I think where you are coming from in the area of our children learning to be independent and learning to be people of our, our, their own, mm -hmm. in the whole sense of being a parent, you are simply a steward. That child really does not belong to you. That child belongs to God, if you are really, to be honest. You are merely okay. a steward in that child's life for the period of when the child is born till the child reaches adulthood. Once the child reaches adulthood, excuse me, if that child has not become independent of you, then I'm sorry you've not done your job. And independence is not in learning how to cook or learning how to clean or learning how to take care of themselves physically. Are they independent in their minds? Can they make decisions? Can they make informed, intelligent, mature decisions independent of you? Can they stand on their own? Can they be critical thinkers? That is where maturity, and that is where your parenting, that's where you get a scorecard. That is where you get a scorecard. What kind of adult has come out of you? What kind of 21-year-old do you have? Is he or she empathetic? Is she or she kind? Is he or she considerate? Is he or she polite? Is he or she not a pushover? Is he or Ooh. she can they? I love that pushover part. I love the fact that you mentioned that one because we teach them to be good. Intelligent. Is he or she street smart? Your child must be street smart. Don't bring up an ajebo. Your child should be able to enter a, 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 a bus. And I think that particularly goes to us who talk about it Christianity. Said, excuse me, this I, boss I thing, I have an issue, I have an issue with it. The boss this thing, boy. the child doesn't have to enter a bus if they don't have to. Let, let me tell you something, but and, they, and, and why, why am I coming in they here? Don't have to, but they should be able to. Yes, but, but they don't have to because there's this conception, de depending on the social status that you come from, there's this thing against rich kids, like they don't even know how to enter the bus or they'll get lost. And I've always argued about it. And I tell you what, I always say the prime minister of England, tell me when he entered the bus and yet he became prime minister. All the members of the House of Parliament, can you please tell me when they enter the bus, the buses, trains? Sure. Don't, don't come don't, from affluent backgrounds. I don't think so entering a bus does not make you no no I, I there are many think, other lessons. No, I don't the think bus. I don't think hold on, let, before I go, before I go, sorry. I don't think it's about the bus thing. I think it's about being street uh street wise. You understand me? I think it's about being street smart. It's not about if you're street smart, if you have if you know what's going on in your environment if you are knowledgeable about what is going on where not to be at certain times that's street smartness do you understand me if you know okay let me give you an example if you if your child knows that the environment you guys stay in there's some measure of security issue if the child is aware you won't find the child going to just any maybe driving a car you won't go to any just any filling station that's because true. We have cities where it is not safe to stop by at the gas station at certain times. It mm. is not safe for you to stop by at certain ATMs, or you could get mobbed. That's now if you are street smart, definitely bus is the smallest of all things that you can maneuver yourself with. Because even foreigners who have never lived in your in your space come around and find their way around with buses. But what I'm trying to say, I wanted to I wanted to quickly tackle what uh, um, um, Ajiri said earlier, and I said something like it earlier in the in the program. You see, 
the ability to recognize the stages of children, when to feed them something, when to cause correct those information that you fed them, you understand me? And when do you to let them action those things? There are different stages. There are, what the way you will treat a, a, a two to seven year old is different from the way you will treat a seven to maybe 13 or 14 year old. And then there's there's a way you treat it from a 13 to an 18 year old. There are different stage, stages. There's a copycat stage. And those are the critical stages. The copycat stage where your child more like copies you. Copy, as uh, Coco said, copies the way you do something, the way you address an issue, the way you speak, the way whatever you're doing. And that is it. It's actually the stage to be extremely careful. Because if you're doing the wrong thing continually, they will copy the wrong thing continually. Then the second stage is where you, you, you let them, you, you course correct. Okay, you've taught your child how to be kind, how to be nice. You understand? How to be giving, how to be everything nice. So the child is, the child appears kind to everyone that he or she meets. But there's a point in their life where you know that there are boundaries, and you there are boundaries correct. to what what you're yes, saying as you kindness. Correct that those nice attributes that you've implanted in them, then you cost correct. And then the next stage is when they take action, and they take it with a lot of sense. They can think Thank on you. their own. Every yes. for every situation they find themselves, they are able to say, "Okay, this is how I'm going to deal with it." And you will find out that 70 80 percent of the times they do it right because okay this is what i that this, this happened this because happened, the right and, and, this, and this is what i did so you need to let them take action if they have not taken action if they are still doing it and you're still over you know over stressing then you have not done your work so those have are you the, not we seen must, that we must recognize those three stages have you not seen that there are some adults that always seem to be in a state of perpetual confusion yeah they cannot, yes. They you see make, that. Where do you think, where do you think it's coming from? They can't take steps. And when they do, there's always one issue or the other. This is not not to not to um, make anyone feel bad, but this is a fact. It's because something something got missing somewhere. And now they have arrived here. And that's what, what it is. Anyway, so... Up, uh, adults were brought up to be needy and dependent needy and independent so they cannot make informed decisions just quickly on sibling rivalry it's as old as the bible as uncle akin said even if you prefer one child to the other even if you have a favorite never show it never let's just begin to do better and the message isn't for everyone it's for those who care and those who want to adopt and make changes positive changes Thank you for being with us. And with that, I will close this now. Enjoy the rest of it. Bye-bye.